tanks and gas and some that are want me to good day to everyone this is uh, our third video uh, again this is mr. Matthew T. Sabasales your friendly science teacher from Sambonga del Sur National High School on this video uh, I'm going to uh, share with you some insights about energy resources as you can see from the previous video that you have just watched uh, the video probably uh, you can uh, decipher from the video that it speaks about natural resources different natural resources so this time let me share with you this uh, idea on energy resources anyway all of these natural resources that we have are all source of our energy and we can make use of these resources to our daily lives for us to uh, be benefited of it and we can uh, go on with our lives so this handout is actually uh, being made by uh, miss lindila a lagdamin our also our science teacher from grade 7 in the sambonga del sur national high school so we will uh, i will be talking uh, with you this one this uh, idea of energy resources in real sense the earth is filled with various raw materials many raw materials when you say raw materials these are materials that we all need for our daily lives and these raw materials is just readily available in the natural environment that we have here on earth so they occur naturally which means uh, these particular resources, natural resources that I am talking about, are all non-man-made. It's actually occurring naturally and we cannot actually make it. And it's just there given to us by God. So, these natural materials, these natural resources, these raw materials that we are, I am talking about, we actually modify them and we, we usually utilize them for our own uh, daily needs depending what needs uh, do we have so let me share to you various natural resources so the first natural resources that i can share with you is this one no as we can see you can find it everywhere no but we cannot actually uh we can just feel it but we cannot actually see it this is actually what we call air so because we have this air we experience wind. By the way, air and wind is different from each other. Uh, wind moves across or parallel in the surface of the ground where there are two types of air. Hot air moves up and cold air goes down. So the, the, the difference between air and wind is that air movement is just up and down while wind is moving parallel on the ground. So it moves on a different area parallel on the ground. So out of this idea of air and wind we come up with various products we manage to utilize the air to produce wind energy so that is why we have several uh we have if that even in ilocos area in the philippines we have wind energy mill wind mills are actually utilizing wind for uh, powering up several uh, technological structures and and uh materials so the air is also utilized in filling up with our tires no the different vehicles that we have today needs air in our tires and in the medical field we utilize the oxygen for example since oxygen is essential for different organisms individuals for example in the hospitals these people who cannot actually breathe we in, uh, we allow them to take in pure oxygen from tanks we we harness oxygen from atmosphere this is part of our air uh, one of them the component mix the component of uh, the mixture of air we harness it and we allow medical uh, practitioners to, to use it for patients 
in, in the hospitals. And in the in the different industries, carbon dioxide, for example, should be utilized. No? So another natural resources that we can find around us are these animals. You can probably see lots of animals around you. And these animals are actually source of our food. Sometimes we take milk from them. We make use of the milk to produce cheese. Uh, we, we cook them. We, we, we harness their, their meat for us to uh, make use of these particular components of the animals for us, for us to have food. And sometimes their, their leather, their, their skin will be utilized for clothing, for wool, sweaters, and some of these wools from other animals, uh, we, we, the silk you know, from, from uh, spiders, for example, are utilized in, our, in our making our, our sweaters to protect ourselves from cold. You see, these are actually natural resources. So we also have here another one, coal. Coal is actually a byproduct of an uh, organic uh, reaction between uh, organic material and chemical reaction underground. And later on, it will be settled into uh, the rocks and eventually become coal. And we make use of this coal. In fact, here in the Sambonga Desert area, we have a coal mine in Malangas area. So this coal actually can be harnessed and and be taken out and be utilized to power up coal energy plant to produce various uh, electricity for the different uh, appliances that we have. And minerals, we we sometimes harness the pre previous video that we have. Uh, you have just watched from me. You you maybe can still remember about the different minerals deposited on rocks. These rocks, these minerals could be uh, harnessed in a form of metals, metallic minerals, and then metallic minerals. Metallic minerals are, are actually being harnessed and being uh, converted into coins, wires in our electrical appliances, and even for steel to make constructions of buildings, aluminums, cans, and jewelry, so for example, gold. So these are actually minerals which were being utilized daily. Another natural uh, resources that we have is this natural gas. So natural gas are actually uh, the byproduct of a chemical reaction exhibited by a specific kind of bacteria uh, underground to as, as it decomposes this particular organic material coming from living things as, as uh, uh, trees and dead trees and dead uh, animals, for example. This, uh, Gases produced can also be harnessed to become uh, natural gas and to power up electrical uh, sources, uh, power plants that could actually readily uh, produce electricity. It will also be utilized for heating purposes. No? Oil. When, when dead organic material eventually disintegrate, oil materials, oily materials or lipid materials will be converted into oil and it will be deposited and we can actually harness this oil and we can make use electricity out of it. We can make use fuel out of it for to power up our cars, our airplanes and various production of plastics. Plants. These are also another natural resources. We can find it around us and we usually make wood from them, from the trees. We cut these trees and we make use of the wood from the trees in building our houses and different constructions, making papers, cotton, clothing. The fruits that we have, that we can harness from plants could also be utilized as food source. The vegetables are also uh, rich in mineral resources that could eventually be uh, useful for us humans. And of course, the primary source of energy on Earth, the sunlight coming from the sun, we can harness this natural energy, natural uh, resource uh, to power up our electrical power plant, such as the solar power plant that we have. And, of course, the plants can harness the sunlight to convert it into food in the process of photosynthesis. And water. We can make use of water for us humans. That is our resource for us to live because we need water. The plants also need water. And these water resources that we have, for example, in rivers, could 
actually be utilized, that the movement of the water could be utilized to power up hydroelectric power plant. So see, uh, we can make electricity out of the movement of water on rivers. So we can drink water, we can eventually clean our uh, particles around us, our homes, due to the use of water. So all of these uh, natural resources that I have actually mentioned with you are just very few. There are still many, many, many natural resources and we humans are actually making use of these natural resources for our own benefit. And you know what? These natural resources could also be energy resources. But we can divide, we can group all of these natural resources. You can even name more natural resources, meaning you can find it around you. Natural meaning they are just there present in our natural environment on earth and we can make use of them. Two kinds of natural resources. I think you've been uh, learning this, you have learned this already from elementary grades during your grade 4, grade 5, grade 6. You've been taught already about renewable and non-renewable resources. When you say renew renewable resources, these are resources wherein it cannot be, uh, no, in which is replaced naturally. So it cannot be easily be depleted. It cannot be easily lost because it is renewable. Our natural environment can replenish, can replace the, the lost, the used resource and easily. No? So example for this are oxygen, fresh water, solar energy, the timber, the biomass that is there on the plants. We consider them renewable because uh, it can easily be replaced by a natural uh, process. For example, water. Water are just freely being recycled and we use it and then it will be returned back into the, 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 the earth and the earth will eventually uh, produce water. So you see, water, even if we constantly use water, it cannot be just easily be depleted. Oxygen, the plants is constantly producing oxygen. So even if we use oxygen, this air, it will be replaced by the plants eventually. Solar energy, so the energy that is there from the, the light of the sun, so it can just be uh, replaced. So these are all examples of renewable energy. But there are also source of energy, natural resources that we have, wherein it is non-renewable. Why non-renewable? Because as we use it, the, the supply of this resource will become limited and limited and limited until eventually no more energy will be produced and it, it will be utilized because all had been utilized already by the different individuals. So we call this type of energy resource as non-renewable. Example for this are this particular oil, crude oil, and petroleum, liquid petroleum. So although it will take uh, we can uh, actually allow our earth to produce this, but it will take millions and billions of years after it will be replaced by a new one. That is why non-renewable re resources are actually uh, something that we must be uh, very careful in using it because it needs, you know, the earth needs lots of years before it can replace that non-renewable energy. So, for example of this, our cunning mga crude oil and, and liquid petroleum that we have, gases, gasolines, these are actually harnessed from, from uh, beneath the ground. And as we constantly get all of these uh, resources from the ground, the, the, the amount will become limited, limited, magagamay, magagamay, until such time comes, mahurut din siya. And it will take the earth to have it again for billions and millions of years. So that is a, an example of non-renewable resources. Uh, uranium, no? soil, natural gas like methane, coal, tars, the sand, uh, tarry oil that comes from the cement, sedimentary rock are all non-renewable resources. In the Philippines, we have several energy resources since we are actually part of the tropical area of the earth, uh, we, we consider our country as a tropical country because if you can still recall our lesson on, on the tropics on the globe, 
we actually lies on the two tropics, Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. We can still recall that. So being part of the tropics, tropical, we are experiencing tropical climate, our geological condition provides several possibilities to get clean and cheap energy. So in the tropics, we have lots of, of solar energy we can take just uh, we have 12 hours sunlight and 12 hours daylight so the following are the energy resources in the tropics so solar energy heat from the ground through the process of geothermal extraction we call it geothermal energy source hydrothermal energy from falling water wind energy since heat is the very reason why there is wind and we have lots of natural energy here so here are natural energies that we have on earth on the tropics solar energy solar energy uses this uh, picture if you can look at this picture this picture shows uh, a solar panel this solar panel converts light energy into electrical energy so you see light and heat from the sun is uh, are free from inexhaustible so that the tropical climate and the geological conditions are pro also provide several possibilities to get clean and cheap energy so we have in Cagayan de Oro, the Sipalco is actually having this uh, solar power plant. So it's also in Misamis Oriental. There'll be the Sacasol one in San Carlos City, in Negros Occidental. They're also utilizing solar energy. We also utilize this in the Philippines geothermal energy. Geo means earth and thermal means heat. So the heat from the earth, it is converted into electrical energy in this particular power plant. So that's what we call geothermal power plant. This is a picture of a geothermal power plant. And we have several examples of this from the Philippines. We have the Bachman geothermal production field in Sorsogon City. We have in Leyte, we have Leyte geothermal production field, specifically in Ormoc City. Uh, Malitbog geothermal power station, so Malitbog, Southern Leyte. See, Makiling, Banahaw, Makban, we call it Makban because Makiling and Banahaw. Geothermal power plant in Barangay between uh, Bay Laguna. So that's actually in Laguna. Mindanao geothermal production field in Kadapawan City and in North Cotabato. We have the Tiwi geothermal power plant in Tiwi Albay and the Pungunan geothermal production field in Ormoc later. So these are all specific uh, heat uh, conversion, conversion of heat into electrical energy through the plant, the geothermal power plant. Here in Mindanao, in our locality, especially in, in uh, near here in, in Zamboanga del Sur area, our electrical source is powered by an hydroelectric power plant. So when you say hydrothermal energy, these are, these are electrical energy generated out of an hydroelectric power plant. You can see the dam over here. So this dam actually utilizes the movement of this water to turn the turbine, to convert the turbine the, the movement of the turbine into electrical energy to harness electrons and allow these electrons to move into the, the, the wire to become electric current. So we have that in uh, Lanao del Sur area. So we have Agusan 1 hydroelectric power plant is near Marawi City, Lanao del Sur. Ag Agus 6, Agus 1, Agus 6 hydroelectric power plant in Iligan City, Lanao del Norte. Then we have the Pulangi hydroelectric power plant in Maramag, Bukidnon. We have the Tal Talumo Hydro 1, Barangay Malagos, Davao City. We have the Talumo Hydro 2, Barangay Mental in Davao City. So these are actually all hydroelectric power plants. See? Wind energy. So what I've said in the previous uh, discussion that we have, wind can also be harnessed to turn the, the windmills and the windmills as the windmill turn, this is actually a windmill, you can see the picture over here. So with the, when this particular windmill, when this particular uh, propeller turns because of wind, it will also turn the turbines and convert the wind energy into electrical energy. We call it wind power plants in the Philippines. We have several of it. Perhaps there are many in Ilocos Norte. We have the Bangui Wind Farm in Bangui, Ilocos Norte. And we have the Caparispisan uh, Wind Farm in Pagudpod, Ilocos Norte. We have the San Lorenzo Wind Farm, San Lorenzo Guimaras. 
and the Burgos wind farm, Burgos Elox Norte. So you can see the picture over here are all wind power plants. And in the Philippines, we also utilize natural gas. We have different natural gas power plants in the Philippines. When you say natural gas, these are gases produced naturally by the bacteria, by plants, no? And eventually, we harness this natural gas to serve as fuel for our electric plants. So, the natural gas power plant in the Philippines, we have the Ilihan uh, Combined Cycle Power Plant in Batanga City. So, most of our, our natural gas plant is actually there in Batangas. So, in San Lorenzo Combined Cycle Power Plant in Batangas also, and the Santa Rita Combined Cycle Power Plant. So another uh, oil power plant in the Philippines is also another natural resource, energy resource that we have is taken from the use of oil. So oil power plant in the Philippines we have in Bataan, combined cycle power plant in Bataan. So you have there the picture, that's the exact picture of the Bataan combined cycle power plant using oil. And perhaps we have lots of coal power plant. So when you say coal, coal is actually extracted through mining and this particular large coal could be utilized to it could burn and produce heat and power up the turbine so we have that in Sambonga city so coal power plant in the Philippines we have in Mindanao coal plant in uh, Villanueva, Misames Oriental the PEDC coal fee, uh, fired plant in La Paz, Iloilo city we have the Swal coal fired power plant in Swal, Pangasinan uh, Pagbilao coal power plant in Pagbilao Quezon and in Davao also but we also have that there in Samonga city so since these are actually all examples of energy source some of them are actually non-renewable so the sources of this energy are non-renewable so for example the coal the just the coal no? and the, 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 the natural gas and oil Oil, coal, oil, natural gas are all non-renewable. So since it's non-renewable, we need to conserve it. So we, uh, the people must, or the human beings living on this area, utilizing this particular source of energy, we must conserve this source of energy because it's non-renewable. So here are some easy ways to conserve and save our environment. So you can actually read this one, read all of this, and... Collect rainwater and save it to water your plants. So these are all tips. Avoid disposable utensils. So try shortening your shower by just a minute. Turn your computer off and you go to sleep. So these are all examples of, of ways, easy ways to conserve energy. Since uh, some of this energy resource that we have, natural resource that we have, are non-renewable. So you can make uh, your reflection, write it down on a one whole sheet of paper, write down all the things that you have learned from this video and you can submit it to your Heinz teacher for an additional points for the fourth quarter. So please uh, do it and uh, review the video, look at your handouts, read your handouts, study and if you can find more and more natural resources, you can do so and share it to your classmates also. So that's all. Uh, this is your friendly teacher, a science teacher from Sambonga del Sur National High School, Matthew T. Sabasales, saying, stay cool and learn science.